Space Marines, Chaos, Orcs, Tyranids, Eldar, Necron and Tau. We all know who populates the galaxy today in Warhammer 40k, and most are familiar with at least a bit of the events and history that make up the 41st millennium as it stands. For example, if I said the two words to you, the Horus Heresy, you'd probably be able to tell me a little bit about that. But what happened before all of that? What came before Jimmy Space crafted his Space Marines? What populated the planet before Orc Spores made them the dominant species of the galaxy? And who were the big bads of the setting before the Chaos Gods? Well, to answer those questions, we're going to have to dial the clock back millions of years to when the Milky Way galaxy was first formed and when only two dominant factions roamed it, the Necrontier and the Old Ones. Actually, you know what, we have to go back even further than that to the birth of the galaxy itself, the creation of the beings now known as the Catan. At the dawn of creation itself, beings known as the Catan, or Star Gods, came into existence. They were the first self-aware creatures to ever be born. As beings of pure energy, they fed on other energy, with stars as their major food source. Basically, they were massive parasites that stole energy from stars, but they avoided planets, finding them to have little worth, meaning that the creatures that lived on them did have a chance at life. On these planets, our secondary main player was climbing the evolutionary ladder. The Old Ones were the first sentient beings to develop a spacefaring civilization, possessing a deep wisdom in their toady lizard brains that granted them a great amount of knowledge of the stars, astronomy, and physics. Their science hasn't been matched by any Warhammer race today, appearing almost like an arcane art to anyone that even has a glimpse of it. They built warp gates allowing them to travel great distances across the galaxy in the blink of an eye, kind of like the Eldari webway, only on a much larger scale with an improved capability. With this ability of easy travel, the Old Ones roamed around the galaxy, creating new intelligent life forms as part of their great empire. It is believed the Old Ones created the Eldar, humans, and the Jokaro, or those eight people that you know have like one model on the Games Workshop web store. You know what I'm talking about. The Old Ones were having a great time as an unrivaled power in the Milky Way, and for some millions of years, it seemed like they'd completed Warhammer 40k, truly being the dominant force in the galaxy. However, this couldn't last forever, and there was a new force rising in the stars. The Necrontier didn't have an easy time starting their civilization. Growing up on the Halo stars, which are the worst place Warhammer 40k has come up with, they suffered from immense radiation and solar storms on their planet which gave the Necrontier people the life expectancy of cavemen. Eventually, they managed to gather the technology needed to set out among the stars. Little by little, they built an empire. When they settled enough worlds, the Necrontier began to be ruled by the Triarch, a council of three dynasty leaders headed by the Silent King. With this new age of discovery, the Necrontier also found the Old Ones, an all but inevitable discovery with the vastness of the Old Ones empire. To the Necrontier, the Old Ones were like wizards. They had mastery over space travel, and more importantly, they had also appeared to have mastered immortality. When you're a cancerous lad who spent his whole life hoping he might make it to his 21st birthday, to see a lizard bragging about having the, the watch he got for his 4,000th birthday might annoy you a bit. The Silent King, Zarek? Gonna go with Zarek. And then Akronte demanded to know the Old One's secrets of extending their lives. The Old Ones, however, didn't want to give the Darth Plagueis looking boys any of that, and so a great war kicked off between the two powers in space, a war that the Eldar would later refer to as the War in Heaven. Even with some better war tech, the Necrontier had no chance against the Old Ones at first, and got clapped back to their horrible, radiated worlds among the Halo stars, their territory dwindling to a fraction of its former glory. As the Necrontier enjoyed their pseudo imprisonment on their homeworlds, they developed a severe case of small empire syndrome, growing to hate all intelligent life as well as the old ones. To get their revenge, they needed a great power, and they just so happened to find that when they stumbled upon the Catan. No one really knows how the Catan contacted the Necrontier, but it is believed that they were first discovered when Necrontier scientists found strange anomalies by old, dying stars in the galaxy, likely victims of the star god's feeding. Once contact had been established, the Necrontier were immediately impressed by the powers of the Star Empires, eventually calling them the Catan, which means Star Gods. As beings of pure energy, the Catan were larger than whole planets, so the Necrontier made them giant bodies from Necrodermis, or living metal, so that they might be able to better get to know their new powerful friends. 
Eventually, a Catan known as the Deceiver got into contact with the Silent King and told Sharak a made-up story about how there was once a war between the Star Gods and the Old Ones, and that the Catan were also after revenge. Thinking that their goals were aligned, the Silent King opted for an eager alliance with the Catan. Seeing the powers the Catan had and the boons they could grant them, the Necrontia began worshipping the Star Gods as, well, gods. However, this gave the Catan a feast unlike anything they'd ever had before, as now they could feed on the mortal energies of the creatures worshipping them, rather than just finding new stars and devouring them. With the Necrontia having such short lifespans though, the Catan couldn't exactly have more than a light snack when eating their life energies. So, in order to combat this, the Catan made the Silent King an offer. For free, the Deceiver says, we can give you guys immortal mechanic bodies like ours. Then, we can take on the old ones together. Sweet, says the Silent King. Not much that could go wrong there. Well, there was a lot that could go wrong. Spoiler. This process would rid the Necrontia of all their cancers and radiation poisoning, but it would also remove their flesh and soul, giving the latter to the Catan as food. Still, the entire Necrontia race went ahead and gave up their mortal bodies. Also, this new process gave the Silent King utter control over the entire Necrontia Empire with new command protocols basically making them no more than robots. Only when the Silent King saw his own transformation did he realise what was going on as he saw the Catan feasting on the energies of his people. He felt an immense amount of regret and emptiness, as only a select few were spared to keep their consciousness still intact. Gone were the Necronti of old, and now there were only Necrons. Still, couldn't win on those feelings for too long, there was a war to win after all. With new godlike entities on their side and immortal bodies, round two of the war in heaven began. The Necrons now enjoyed a new sense of unity too, thanks to the command protocols of the Silent King. I suppose that means it was less unity and more forced coercion, but hey, whatever gets the job done, am I right? And against the Old Ones, the Necrons and the Catan have very much got the job done. The Old Ones were all but doomed before the second part of the war in heaven even began, and once it had started, it seemed like nothing could stop the machine onslaught. The Old Ones were pushed back at every turn, planets were raised and suns were extinguished in battles that the species of the 41st millennium wish they could replicate. In the closing years of the War in Heaven, the Necrons even managed to gain access to the Old Ones' webway, giving them no chance of escape or time to recuperate. With their victory all but assured, the Catan surprisingly began fighting among themselves. It isn't exactly known why or how this began, but there is an Eldar myth that their laughing god managed to trick the first Catan into betraying his brothers. Eventually, the Star Gods began devouring each other, rather than sharing the vast billions of mortal lives on which they could feast, until only a few were left in the galaxy. This gave the Old Ones enough breathing space to try and turn the tide. Facing extinction and getting desperate, the Old Ones created new intelligent beings with a strong connection to the warp, what we know today as Psychers. It took millennia, but the Old Ones eventually managed to bring about these new warriors with incredible psychic abilities to combat the Catan and Necrons. Weakened and unable to fight the strength of the warp, the Catan found their empire in pieces, and now the desperation was on the other foot. Uniting for the first time in millions of years, the Catan decided they would make a great warding to stop the powers of the warp seeping into the Milky Way. Before this work could be completed, the Old Ones' own efforts backfired on them, as the psychers they had made strayed too close to the powers of the warp, eventually being possessed by enslavers, or what we would call chaos demons. These possessed psychers began tearing at their allies and turning the forces of the old ones into disarray as they were shown they were never the masters of the warp. This marks the first time chaos made an appearance to mess everything up in 40k as it showed the old ones they had no safe places left. The webway was assaulted now by both creatures of the warp and necrons and while the old ones attempted to create new races such as the barbaric crocs to fight off extinction, these efforts came too little too late. It isn't known whether the Lizard Boys fled to avoid extinction, or whether they were simply wiped out, but they haven't been seen in the Milky Way since. With the Old Ones gone then, and all the races they created being lost without them, how do the Necrons just not dominate the galaxy? Well, we have the Silent King to thank for that. While the Catan had been focused on decimating the Old Ones, Jarek had been biding his time, waiting to betray his vampiric overlords. With their mastery of technology and weaponry, the Necrons managed to craft weapons that were too mighty for even the Catan to withstand. As the Silent King led his people in revolt, these weapons could not kill the Catan, but instead shattered them into thousands of shards, each of which were locked up in a labyrinth, never to be seen again. 
Even with the Catan defeated and the Old Ones gone, the Silent King didn't have the capacity to keep the Necrons on top. They had lost millions in the short war against the Catan, and new races were beginning to establish themselves in the stars, such as the Eldar. And so, the Silent King gave his people one last order, and that was to take a big nap, transforming their cities into huge tombs so that in 60 million years, they could wake up and rebuild what they had lost. Following that, the Silent King broke off his command protocols and sailed away into the void. With the Necrons sleeping, the Elder had no competition in establishing themselves as the greatest power in the Milky Way. However, the glory days of the Space Elves didn't last long, but that's a story for another day. This doesn't bring us right up to humanity and the time of the Imperium, but I hope you've enjoyed this little foray into Warhammer 40k's beginnings. I know a lot of other channels have covered stuff like this, but if you enjoyed it, do let me know. I'll try and make some more stuff like this. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.